So Novak Djokovic does it again. He wins in the fourth round against Francisco Sarundalo. An incredible performance, fighting against adversity. This is our post-match reaction. Let's go through it. Well, where do we begin with that? Novak Djokovic in yet another five-set match. He's just beaten Massetti the other day. He's now beaten Francisco Sarundalo. This one was very different for many reasons. It was focused around the knee injury. Yeah. He had a medical timeout. He was two sets to one down, just like Massetti. But this time, it was a bit different because he was down a break in the fourth set. It looked like he was going to lose it, 4-2 down. And I think we've got to start the video by just focusing on how the hell did Novak Djokovic win that match? And it's not the first time we're saying these same lines. It happens with him many, many times. He seems completely out of it and somehow manages to pull through in remarkable fashion because I wouldn't say he scraped it really at the end. It wasn't no. like a fifth set in which it went to a tie break. He had to really get through Sarundalo and Sarundalo had chances or match points. It was extremely different. This was Novak Djokovic playing his best tennis in a fifth set. Yep. I thought he played better then than what he did for large spells of the match. And it's remarkable that we're here again with him now breaking all of the records. You can see here, look, two sets to one down, two, four, uh, in the fourth set, it was 6-1-5-7-3-6-7-5-6-3 in the fifth. And he's now reaching the quarterfinals at Roland Garros for his 15th consecutive time. Yes. Four hours, 40 minutes. It's 59 Grand Slam quarterfinals. He's passed Federer for, for quarterfinals. Come on. He's passed Federer for slam victories. Yep. Start with the injury. What did you make of it? Well, there's, there's people saying it's it's a it's a fake injury. It's well, I mean, over dramatized. Well, I want to like crush all the naysayers right now because if it's a fake injury, what do you plan ahead? A fake injury? Do you come into the uh, Roland Garros enclosure with stuff already taped up because it's a fake injury? I don't think so. Who plans ahead a fake injury? I mean, if you're really a conspiracy theorist, I mean, grow up. This guy is just doing things, this is unbelievable, at an age which no one else is doing it. I can't believe he's done it again. I, th I thought, when I saw him with that injury, I thought, this is, he's done. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that, that we have like the, the medical advancements we have in this day and age because they've given him certain things while he's there on court, obviously legal things that he's allowed to take, but they're the things that are able to help numb pain like, so to get him through the match. And you saw clearly he played better once his body started feeling better. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, trust me, tonight, once it all wears off, he's going to be feeling terrible. So, so on that basis, Ben, you've got him going up next round? No. Because you've got to. Why? Because if he's genuinely had painkillers to get through the pain that was that bad and the way he was acting for large spells during that match, then surely he's not going to be able to win the next match. Well, that's like me saying to, gonna, that's like, that's like me saying to you, one. would Rafael Nadal have not won it if he'd have stopped getting his uh, foot injected? Is that the case? But he didn't. He was able so to have the drugs. So your theory is that now Djokovic is going to be painkillered up to the hill for the rest of the tournament, and that's how he's going to get if he has and win all the to. matches. If he has to, well, surely he it will. does, because it seemed very severe the way he was acting. Well, so you'd now. It's, it's, it's not the first time this has happened. I believe it is completely genuine. Of course, there's a lot of trolls on social media. I felt very sim sympath sympathetic for Novak Djokovic for large spells of the match. Um, it was sad to see the way he was playing. It looked like he was going to be going out on a real whimper. It did. Somehow, I don't know how he's done what he's done. It was remarkable. I think it's and that's credit things. to him, big time, for what he's been able to do. But if it's just a case of painkillers, for me, next match he goes out. Because I don't think it's sustainable to keep having to dose yourself it's up. three things. And you're going to have other plays. He's just played consecutive now, uh, best uh, five-set matches. Yeah. And the only thing that goes in his favour with that is you can see here, this is instances where Djokovic played consecutive four-hour matches yeah. at a Grand Slam. And in that situation, Wimbledon 2007, he won both. Australian Open 2012, won both. Roland Garros 2012, won both. 2021 Roland Garros, won both. And now we're here in 2024, Roland Garros. Um, Again. Is he going to win both? <laughs> 
Oh, he has won both. I mean, if he was to go five sets again, that would be the real factor. Can he do it again? Because four and a half hour matches are not easy and he's not getting any younger. But I think it wasn't just the fact that he was able to have like maybe some drugs that helped with the pain. And it's, it's all up here. It's a bit mental as well. And that goes for Sarundalo as well, because as soon as he'd got that, and I think he knew, if I can force this into a fifth, I've got the mental edge instantly. And you saw it. He was the better player in the fifth set. Same with Massetti. As soon as you get into a fifth set, they're, they're mentally broken. And he will always take the match to you in the fifth. I, I understand what you're saying. I do also want to just say Sarundolo played amazingly well. Oh, credit to, credit him. to Sarundolo. He, he made it a great match. But Brilliant. one important thing to know on his performance is he threw it away as well. Yeah. I don't care how good Djokovic was. I don't care how good of a champion he is. In that fourth set, 4-2 four, up, he had Djokovic exactly where he wanted him. Djokovic was running off the court and couldn't get back onto the court because of the injury. It was playing up more yep. than ever then in the fourth. In the third, probably it was worse, I must admit. Um, but yet again, it didn't Im impact him. Don't get me wrong. In that, in that part of the match, he should have beaten Djokovic. Yeah. If he was playing anybody else, and this is a point I wanted to make, if he was playing a high level of competition, you can do that against Massetti, you can do that against Solindolo, you can't do that against Alcalaz, a Zverev, a Sinner, you will be beaten. And this is why, looking at Djokovic through this tournament, I don't think that he's really at that level to beat those top players. He's at the level to beat these players, but we're gonna see when he goes through to the next round. Is it, if it's another five sets, He's going to be struggling because if he meets somebody like a Zverev in a semi-final, it's going to be really, really tough because Zverev, he doesn't go away. He takes the opportunities and he'll probably finish Novak Djokovic if he gets the chance. Yeah. Looking at what Novak Djokovic had to say after beating Surundalo, um, Willander asked a question. I don't have words to describe what I witnessed. How did you do that? And Novak said, I had the same question from Alex Correggio after the last match. I have to say thank you to the fans. Like in the previous match against Massetti, it was 2 all in the fourth set and my energy level changed completely. You gave me a lot of energy. Today, the same thing happened. You gave me a lot of support. Not yeah. much more I can say. Perhaps I was three or four points from losing this match today. I have to congratulate Francisco because he played with excellent quality. He deserves to be applauded. The yeah. only explanation I have is thanks to you. So thanks again for all of your support. And he's just really putting yeah. it down to the fans. What got him for? I, I don't I even a lot more than that. I, he, wasn't, he wasn't getting that much love. I think it's not only the fans, but it's not often. And I know that there's been a lot of people saying this around this tournament as well. Is people are only going to start appreciating Djokovic once he's gone. But I don't think that's true. I think people are starting to appreciate Djokovic once he's losing. Because yeah. we don't get to see true, Djokovic yeah. when he's losing that often. Yeah. And now we get to see the crowd on Djokovic's side. Maybe the back end of Djokovic's career is him going to be down in matches and everyone cheering for him to come back. Because it's great to see. I've never seen so many people cheering on Novak Djokovic. And... I'm hoping it continues for the rest of this year. Well, we've got good reason to cheer him on because it's 370 wins in majors. He's now surpassed Roger Federer, who had 369. Yep. Can he win the whole thing? I don't think so. Mm. And the big reason for that is to do with the injury. We've got John in saying uh, Djokovic getting treatment on his knee and one hopes this is a mere tweak. If not, maybe even so, let the discussion begin. Is there a correlation between a body clock that is off and missteps? And people are going to start talking about his mm. age yeah. when he's losing. When he wins, they won't talk about it. And he's managed to escape a lot of them questions because I feel like in that fourth set, there would have been a lot of different, the whole narrative would have been different. Tennis is fine margins. A few points can determine what's going to happen in a match. And really, if that fourth set went slightly differently, we'll be having a completely different conversation right now. Yeah, definitely. And people would be speaking about his body clock and his age and the injuries and when's he going to retire or is he going to win a grand yeah. slam again. Now people are saying, oh, can he go and win it? I don't think he can because of the injury. And I think the younger players and the likes of Asina or Alcaraz will pick him apart and 
I feel he's done incredibly well to get as far as he has, considering he's not been in good form and he's having to go through some injury problems. Yeah, I think the, the one thing takeaway from this tournament uh, as a whole so far is even though Djokovic doesn't look like the best player in the tournament, he still looks like a top five player. And that's the one takeaway. He's better than the rest. He's probably not better than an Alcaraz or a Sinner or yeah. maybe even a Zverev right now. I know everyone's going to say, well, Zverev went to five with Greek sport. Yeah, but he still won and he's still probably fitter. He's 10 years younger and he'll probably be able to go the duration without injury. That's the problem. Yeah, well, anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. It'd be great to hear from you. And if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. And do you think Novak Djokovic now, after this big statement win, two five-set um, five matches in a row, he's done it unbelievably. Is he going to go on now to win Roland Garros? Is he going to go on to win the next tournament? What do you think for his hopes in this event? I'm not very positive. I think Sarundalo is going to be a tough top loss for him to take when he gets home tonight. I think he's oh, going to yeah, be massive. looking at all the really opportunities he had. It's not a bottle's a tough word because it's Djokovic. I don't think anyone can really bottle. First time he's ever played him. But the nerves, I think you could more frame it as the occasion got to him. Yeah. For sure. And I think he was a bit too nervous in large spells of the match. If he was able to play his full game, it could have been a different story. But thanks for watching and we'll see you very soon. Well done to Nole. Eat him all!